Hello and welcome back to TMS TV. I'm Paul Harvey, the editor of MNIT, and I'm here now with Martin Fullard, the Director of News and Content at the Business of Events. And Davis Tanner. And Davis Tanner, sorry. Always forget that bit. Um, how are you doing? Yeah, not bad. I've uh, been in my new position now for eight months. You know, Davis Tanner's a brilliant company to, to work for. I'm having lots of fun uh, on some client projects and helping uh, some of the biggest names in the industry with their own content and their own sort of advocacy. And of course, through the Business of Events, it's a, it's a forever learning curve trying Absolutely. to deal with the government and the various <laughs> different machinations that, that, that exist around that. But yeah, it's been, it's been great fun. Brilliant. I mean, that's really good to hear. And you have a session today, that's right, about government policy initiatives? Yeah, so 11.45 today on the impact and inform stage, uh, I'm going to be joined by Patrick Lamont from Visit Scotland Business Events, uh, Peter Heath from Venue Performance, and at the last moment off the substitutes bench, Kerin McPhee from the MIA. Oh, fantastic. Who, not a bad substitute. It's not a bad substitute, <laughs> actually. Uh, we're going to be talking about various policy initiatives that are sort of being discussed by UK events at that sort of top level. Uh, I won't reveal what they are just yet because, no, of no, course, no. we I want, don't want to, to spoil the session. Exactly, the panel has to have some yeah. element of surprise. <laughs> uh, but we're also going to be talking to Visit Scotland about some of the uh, policy initiatives that they've taken on themselves, such as their transformation protocol and uh, other such things, which really is all about harnessing the power of business events, not just as a pure economic driver, but for genuinely making change in society. And the transformation protocol is a really good sort of opportunity to connect with experts in Scotland you know they're really using the network through uh, you know through science through technology through education and in business and in government as well to find the right expertise for your event so if you're bringing your event overseas from overseas you know you can be connected with the right expertise to really enhance your event and you know focus much more on that future building element so I think that's a really good template for for policy more widely and of course with the events industries being under the tourism ban uh, uh, bracket, yeah. that is essentially a devolved uh, element of government. So maybe it's something we can look at in England more widely and in Wales. But Scotland seems to be doing a great job, and I think we can learn so quite a lot from them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like they, what, what, they, what they're doing up there is fantastic. And I'm guessing, well, I, I know that some of the research came out from... Um, you went out to the industry earlier in the year and did some research and that's going to be feeding into the session today, is that right? Yeah, so we have did a, a big consultation uh, back in February, we opened it and we kept that open until mid-May. Uh, there were quite a lot of responses as you can imagine so I haven't actually been able to collate absolutely everything yeah, uh, but yeah. we're well into the hundreds of, of responses and there's some really interesting responses I think largely as you'd expect lots of people agree that business events are you know fantastic facilitators for business growth for sustainability uh, and and all the rest of it the question is we have this sort of data what do, what what do we do with that now we need to articulate plans around this sort of feedback and you know things like national event strategies and other such things are uh, very much what we're going to be looking at. But when you're speaking to government as well, that data is vitally important, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think, you know, that goes without saying. I think we, we, we maybe sometimes forget that, you know, MPs, they are incredibly busy, love them or hate them. They yeah. do have a lot of information to process and we can't sit around here waiting for them to be proactive and just say, oh, OK, well, we go and do that. We have to continuously drip feed information to them. And we do that uh, through Davis Tanner to the all-party parliamentary group, uh, we're constantly feeding them information just to sort of keep them up to speed so they don't have to make the effort. We'll do the hard work for them, no problem. We obviously now need to make sure that that collaborative approach between the industry organisations can get that information now to the right ministers running the department, so particularly in the DCMS, but also in the Department for Business and Trade as well. So we've got the all-party parliamentary group being educated, wonderful, that's great, tick that off, but we've got to make sure that that information is really influencing the activities within the government departments themselves now. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's fantastic work that you're doing, and uh, good luck with it, and hope the session goes well later today. When is it? Uh, it's 11.45 this morning. At the... Which At stage? the impact and inform stage. Impact and inform stage. All right, fantastic. Okay, Martin, well, thank you very much for joining me and uh, enjoy the day. Thanks, Paul. Cheers.